Jack, that's unbelievable. I don't even know what to say. I'm, uh, <laughs> um, I'll say I, I can't wait until uh, the summer and and uh, seeing you shortly. This is this is unbelievable news, and I'm just so thankful and grateful. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cooperstown, New York. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Answer it. Oh, no, I'm gonna leave it. Go to the Answer it. Yes, <laughs> Hello. Hello, oh, man. Speak with Adrian Beltre, please. Yes, sir. This is him. Adrian, this is Jack O'Connell, the baseball. Calling you from the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Your new second home, the baseball writers have elected you to the Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. Oh, it's official. Boom, coming in hot, Chinchy. How about that, brother? With those inductions, incredible. Very cool, man. Can you imagine, like, you, you played baseball. Like, can you imagine when that phone rings, like, what? Like what would go through your head? Can you even put that into into words? Like, like it probably yeah. happened to you, like when you got the call for Reds Hall. Oh, the Red, that, dude, it, the what Reds Hall, like? of, the Reds Hall of Fame for me was uh, was like my Cooperstown. You know, I I I had good numbers. I had over fifteen hundred hits, career three hundred hitter. I had some good postseason numbers. You know, you know over three hundred doubles. You know, uh, blah 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 blah, all that stuff. Eight fourteen at career OPS. You know, but. Not warranted no for Cooperstown. Deal. That's how good Cooperstown is. I mean, just getting on the ballot was a big deal for me, which is pretty cool. Um, but, dude, you know, to think about this. And I, I, I've said this on, uh, before, but I'm going to say it again. 5% of all the people that get drafted play a day in the big leagues. Of those 5%, 17% played 10 years or more. Now, to be on the Cooperstown ballot, which I was fortunate enough to do, I, I met that criteria. I had 12 years in the big league, so yeah. I met that criteria with numbers to be on the ballot. Yeah, you so were think really about that. So the, the <laughs> one percenters of those guys make Cooperstown, dude. Like, it's, it's such a unique, small fraternity, and that's why it's a big deal. Like, it's it's different than every other Hall of Fame. I mean, hate to say it, but like the NFL, you'll see seven, eight, nine guys go in a year sometimes, you know? Right. The, the, the Major League Baseball, it's not easy to get in, man. And it's, uh, you know, when you, when Adrian Beltre, you know, obviously over 3,000 hits is going to get you in, over, you know, over 400 home runs, all the gold gloves, you know, longevity too, you know, played close to 20 years. Um, you know, Todd Helton, I'm just so glad Todd Helton's in because for me, man. You, you came up together. I they, mirrored it. Dude, I yeah. went, I same draft. We were both a 95 right. draft. Both lefties, uh, right? Played both. against each other. Yeah, played against each other in the Cape Cod League in 94. Um, you know, uh, and then played against each other our whole career. He played a few more years than I did. Um, but Helt and I, you know, like I, I, I texted him last night, congrats, dude. And, you know, and he was he was fired up about that. Nice. And then Joe Maurer, man. I mean. Scott bless him. Good so for him. So well deserved, dude. I think he was four votes over getting in or four or five votes over. Uh, just got in, but. Well deserved, man. He's the youngest guy to get in the Hall of Fame. He's forty years old, youngest other than Sandy Koufax, who I believe was thirty six when he got in. So yeah. Mauer, you know, one of the best catchers ever. I, I think the the one thing with Mauer was you were going back and forth with. He played a lot of years at first base, with not real big. I think what are I think his home runs were kind of almost what I had. I had one hundred thirty homers. Right. He had one hundred forty three, I think, or something. You like guys that. actually had very similar numbers he just happened to be a catcher which you got to give him a little extra you get yeah right you get extra credit yeah. for being a good you hitter do. And a catcher, right? yeah you why, why is that explain that like 
it's hard well, because the, the, I think the wear and tear of getting down, you know, you're 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 controlling the the staff too, the pitching staff. It's just a it's a bigger responsibility, man. Every every most of the balls are in your mitt, just like that pitcher's holding the ball. So, you know, it's not easy to to um to put up big offensive numbers like Maurer did, being a catcher. I think his career average is three oh six. He won three batting titles, dude. Three batting titles. Yeah, I'm pulling the stats up right now. I actually want to see his comps real quick on uh, Baseball Reference because I bet you're. I, I wonder if you're one of his comps. I'm. My numbers are close to his. He has no. more hits yeah. than me. Obviously, he played longer. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about when you go to that. that yeah, yeah. I think he played reference. like 17 or 18, 15. He played 15 or 16 years, and I played 11 he, or 12. He played how many years? Well, the last few years he was just he was banged up. 15, 15. You're right. 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, hey, hell of a player. Hey, in his uh, second to last year at 34 years old, he had 305 with 71 ribbies. And then in 2018, his final year at 35, he had 282. Like, yeah, you he know did, how he hard ran. that is at he 35, ran. dude. And being beat up like that. Also, you saw it in uh, uh, when he got the call, like, what a humble guy. I have a pretty funny quick story. Uh, I remember, I don't know if Tim Wakefield was starting actually starting an all-star game but uh remember me and harold used to run around the field uh yeah and then uh at the all-star game I, I got a really good chance to like talk to him for like 10 minutes uh and he had his special glove that he was going to wear to catch catch wakefield in the all-star game oh my god and he was like he was like 26 years old first of all humongous person like, dude, he's a big dude, dude yeah, he's a big five, dude. 225 on the books so probably yeah. six five two forty. And Ann was going to Florida State as a quarterback on a right. full ride when Florida yeah. State was a stud. Was super legit. stud. But like you saw it in in his respect, like very humble, sweet, nicest guy ever. Obviously, was the leader of those those Twins teams. Like deserves everything he gets. And you know, people think, oh, maybe he shouldn't have gotten in. You know what? I, I like a guy like that getting in. I think it's cool. Yeah, um, he should have he got in. He should have yeah. got in. He won three batting titles. Yeah. He was the MVP in 2009. He's one I, of the best I, players. I mean, he's the MVP of the league. Yeah. He's only 40 now. Yo, let's, I know. He just turned 40. It's incredible. Let's see how much money he made real quick. I like he looking. He signed the $180 million deal. He made over 200 mil. Dude. Yeah. Uh, I'll take you behind the curtain a little. When guys used to audition, like when you auditioned to go on MLB Network. You'd look up how much money I made? I, well, <laughs> I'll tell you this, and here's why. Uh, he made two hundred eighteen million dollars as a pr player, just as a player. Um, no, you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. I was, I would produce all the uh, auditions, and I would put a fake rundown together. You know, Harold <laughs> out there. We, you and I, I, I did your, you did yeah, it. You, you were there, yeah, oh. dude. I came, in, yeah, you did my, my audition. <laughs> yeah, we did a demo where we were talking. Yeah, about, uh, yeah. the the throwing the second, throwing a second base. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. There was still, by the you way, were the base runner. I was a base runner, and this was so early on at MLB Network that there was still cardboard. We didn't have uh, turf. That's in, right, 42 uh, wasn't 42. there yet. That's right, that's, that's right. That's where we met, dude. That was a day we met. Crazy. Um, but, no, so I would look up your guys' salaries so I wouldn't feel bad if you sucked. <laughs> and, I, and I tell you, you weren't getting the job at MLB Network. <laughs> swear. Like, this guy made $44 yeah. million. It's good. He made $44 million, <laughs> Like, if he doesn't get this job, I know he's excited about it. He's fine. And I'm grinding, like, you know, <laughs> driving from Long Island two and a half hours to get to this guy. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. So we accent accentuate the positive. Uh, we don't. Dude, not... dude, really quick, though. Yeah, can you ahead. believe that Adrian Beltre becomes just the fifth born player in the Dominican Republic to reach the Hall of Fame? That's all the guys that, that are. That makes Dominican no sense. That makes Half no of sense. Major League Baseball is from the DR or Puerto Rico. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they're all crazy. great players. Yeah, wow. Wow. He's the best. Oh, Pedro Martinez did an unbelievable uh tribute to Beltre last night. Last yeah. night? Look on it the up network? There. No, no, no. On his like uh Instagram feed. I mean, it wasn't him, it was probably Pedro's wife took the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pedro doesn't know how to use a phone, even though he has like seven different burner phones. Right, right. <laughs> um, anyway. Dude, uh, also too, really quick. Yeah. Helton, his numbers are incredible. And, you know, I think incredible. one of the biggest things was they were like, oh, look at his numbers at home. 
345. I mean, this is incredible, dude. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Yeah, tell 345 us. 345 with a, with a, um, a, a 1050 OPS mm -hmm. with 227 home runs at Coors Field. Right. But on the road, bro, he was 287 with an 855 OPS away from home mm -hmm. with 142 homers. Higher OPS on the road than Dave Winfield, Eddie Murray, and Tony Gwynn. So those guys, you are know, good. he could rake, dude. He raked everywhere, man. And he was, to me, man, dude, he was one of the best. I'm gonna read off his 2000 season because I actually argue, up with a couple of Barry Bond seasons and Babe Ruth seasons, it might be the greatest season of all time. You ready? Led the league. In batting average, on base, slugging, OPS, total bases, RBIs, doubles, and hits. Okay, here, ready? 216 hits, 59 doubles, 42 homers. I'll sneak in there. 147 ribbies, 372 batting average, 463 on base, 698 slugging, 1.162 OPS, 405 total bases at 26 years old dude and you That's can say whatever you want about colorado like dude he was good he was like you said he was good he was dude, he good. And, and also too he had consecutive seasons with a hundred extra base hits <laughs> extra. 2000 2021 extra. and this is the other good one he finished his career with more walks 1335 than strikeouts 1175 right. dude Look one thing that. about one thing about todd helton change you were in for a dog fight, dude. Yeah. This guy would foul off 85 pitches in a bat. Like, if you got him 3 2, and, and dude, I, I, you know, obviously he's a Cooperstown and I'm, I'm not, but I, I looked at my, our approach a lot is the same. I used to take the first pitch, like Kurt Schilling was, was on the one time. Hmm. I used to take the first pitch a lot for whatever reason. I don't know if it settled me in. It visually allowed me to, you know, go. Now, with guys on base, you know, I'd be more aggressive. And sure. But Todd Helton, dude, I don't know what the stat is, but he has to be one of the all-time, all-time people that take took the first pitch. Really? Put up those numbers, those power numbers, and he took a lot of first pitches. He liked to settle in and kind of like, and kind of like you know see things too so you know it does make it does make sense i remember see being a yankee fan mattingly always took the first pitch but every once in a while he would jump you oh right. so yeah. Cool. When, yeah. when guys that you know take the first pitch you hit a bomb like you probably you probably did it once right you ever think do yeah. you ever think you hit a first pitch homer and, oh yeah i hit a lot okay. of first pitch homers i didn't take it all the time but like I must admit, my, my first at bat, first at bat, first first at bat, first pitch, I probably took 90, 99.8% wow. of the time because Ted Williams said it in his book. The reason that's why I did it. Yeah. It's, good said, it's good. Ted odd. Williams said, I'd like to use to, I like to take the first pitch of the first at bat every time to oh. get my eyes ready for the game. Hmm. I it makes thought sense. it was incredible. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, it's funny when I let off, when I let off, in high school and you know it's a different mentality because like high school kids obviously don't know what pros do but uh every once in a while i would lead off and when i let, let off i knew the pitcher was trying to get that first pitch of the game for a strike so right. I just no matter what in my head i would go i'm swinging at the first pitch even if it was in the dirt whatever Slider, yeah the odds were the guy was just trying to like get one in there yeah yeah i had yeah, you know, whatever it worked. So you swung. Worked. Didn't make so me dangerous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got your division um, one baseball. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so all right, so we accentuate the positive. Don't want to get too negative here, but let's talk about the guys that didn't get in, and it's Sheffield, Andrew Jones, and Billy Wagner are three people that yeah. you and I have been like, you know, shouting by the, uh, you know, in the town halls about why we think they're Hall of Famers. Um. Right. I understand some of the some of the logic behind. So, listen, a lot of these voters, most of the voters, the voters we are friends with. I, I, I'll say this uh, uh, with no problem. They take it extremely seriously, very seriously, and those guys usually get it right. And a lot of our guys voted for the three guys I just mentioned. Some didn't. Which let's just do let's do Chef. 
Because we've been talking about Chef for like. Well, first off, Billy Wagner was five votes from getting yeah. in. He and he's probably going to get in, right? Yeah, 73 points. I mean, you hope. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I thought Chef would get in. Gary, I mean, we, we've talked about it enough, dude. But at the end of the day, Gary Sheffield's a Hall of Famer. I don't care what anybody says. Guy's one of the best players to ever play. One of the most feared hitters of all time. Not just like in our generation. Gary Sheffield's one of the most feared hitters of all time. Came up as a shortstop, was one of the best athletes out there, played all outfield positions, played, played a little third base. Um, the guy was just consistent as they come. So hopefully the committee gets it right, you know, the the veterans committee in a few years the, from now. His peers will vote him in. I, I hope so, dude. Come on. Yeah. Gary Sheffield's a Hall of Famer. Billy Wagner is a Hall of Famer too, missed by five votes. I hope he gets in next year. Andrew Jones is creeping up 616 He's all a famer to me, dude. He's, right. To me, and I said this before, you know, I'm not saying center fielder as far as offensively. I'm saying from what I saw, I never, and I never saw Willie Mays, you know, play every day. Right. And obviously Junior was, you know, I saw Junior with Cincy when sure. he had a lot of injuries and stuff. So yeah. in Seattle, he was incredible too. I'm just saying watching Andrew Jones from the minor leagues all the way up, he's the best center he's fielder. The, I think he's the Ozzy Smith of center fielders. He really was, dude. He really was. We, if you don't understand the history of the game, you'd have to go back and watch him and be like, really? That, right. I mean, right. it was incredible what he Playing did. Deep shortstop. Yeah. Carlos Beltran at 57-1, he's going to get in. I think he has a little bit of the whole Astros scandals kind of holding him back, but right. he's going to get in. Chase Sutley was interesting. Mm. First year on the ballot, 28.8%. I think that's a pretty big number. Not bad. Chase. And, and they had the basement don't have the stats that a lot yeah, of and and dude they, they were doing something last night on mlb network brian kenny and sherman those guys and jason stark and morosi and they were saying in a six-year period that utley was the maybe the best like, the best player in the game yeah, yeah. Man, which i which cool. i never would have thought but I, like as far as war numbers. goes you know base running uh you know defense clutch hitting home runs i mean the guy was an absolute killer for a six-year period leader leader yeah leader, leader yeah leader, leader of men yeah and then, you know what he did with the dodgers with Corey seager and those guys too so uh, the one guy that's interesting what do you think about omar Vizquel? dude his numbers are incredible and they're going i mean i know he got it they got, he, i think it got a domestic Yes, and that, that's the reason. I, I, if that I, didn't happen, though. He should be in. So, like, what? What is it, dude? Is this? Yeah. Is this the promised land or the holy land here? Like, seriously. I, I go back. Sorry. Hey, go. There's a great movie called Cobb. It's uh, what's his name? Who's the guy? Three. Yeah. He's got okay. three names. He's got no, three Billy, names. Billy. Billy. No way. <laughs> no, not Billy Bob. Billy Bob Thornton. No, no, no. The no, other. No, 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 no. It's the... Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Played that Cobb, and uh. Oh man, I'm screwing this again too. The say anything guy played like a reporter. Uh, who's the say anything guy? Oh, uh, John Cusack. John Cusack, great guy. Uh, go look at that movie, and you want to see a bad person who got into the Hall of Fame. Ty Cobb was maybe the worst human being that's ever lived. Racist. Uh, right. Weird. Mean. Mean. Uh, mean. Beat people up. Beat. Beat. Uh, 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 domestic violence. If Ty Cobb gets into the Hall of Fame, I'm like. It it is what it is, man. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. That's a whole other ball of wax. Can I tell you? I know you got to run, but can I tell you my one crazy story that yeah. I promised you is the most insane story? Okay, yes. Hall of Fame. All right, taking everybody behind the curtain as a producer of these Hall of Fame shows. Okay, it's like our second year. I think I'm hot shit. You know, I'm like the producer of this new network and I'm the, and the network's going well. And I think I'm the badass. I'm 30 years old. You were, you were a badass. Jim. Jag off. So <laughs> what happens is why you, why you guys can see uh, when these guys get the call is because what happens is major league baseball or MLB network and the hall of fame all get together and they send a truck. You call it a truck, send a truck to right. somebody's house. And what that means is there's a producer, there's a camera guy, there's a audio guy, and you're sending in that feed uh, to the network. So there were probably three or four other guys that you didn't see that like a camera's just set up in their living room, kind of like how yours is right now. Right. And it's really cool behind the scenes to sit there. And we had the, all the feeds up in a bullpen. And so I'm producing, uh, uh, it's our first Hall of Fame show, the first one we were gonna uh, announce. Now, at the same time, your boy, my boy, Barry Larkin, 
is eligible and it's his first year on a ballot. And there was a lot of talk like Barry Larkin's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. This is so cool. Right. And he happened to be in a Dominican Republic. That's the key to this story. So his feed is up right next to me. And I'm looking at it. It's beautiful. You know, Barry Larkin's got a gazillion dollars. What does he have? A 50,000 yeah. square foot house yeah, or something? He has a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So his feed, it's like this table overlooking a pool, overlooking the ocean in the DR. It's like unbelievable. And he's just sitting there and he's hanging out and he's like eating and drinking and hanging out. And his family's all around. Now, I'm producing this show. So, I, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm hot shit again because I'm like, oh, I'm friends with Sean Casey and Barry Larkin. <laughs> like, I made it to the big leagues. That's what you, you know, I'm not kidding. And so I'm, I got his feet up and I'm so far up. I'm like, oh my God, my friend might make it into the Hall of Fame. This is great. So I sent him an email. I'm sitting at my desk. John Entz is sitting right across from me. Chris Rombeck is sitting to right. Dude, cases is unbelievable. Oh my God. I, I, I look over and I see he's sitting on He sits down into his feed. And so I'm all excited. I sent him an email. I go, Lark, hey, bro, it's Chinch. Just want to let you know we're all pulling for you at the network. We got to get you in there. You deserve it. You should be first ballot. He writes back, like, he see, I, and I, now it's very funny. Like it's a, I can you see it pop up on his phone. No, I can see him look at his phone. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I have this great job. He looks at his phone, and I see him writing back. And he writes me back, and all of a sudden I see the email pop up on my I, on my screen. I'm like, wow, technology, amazing. I look at his email. He writes back, Chinch, I'm in. Okay. I go, I respond immediately. Holy shit, bro. You deserve this. You're a Hall of Famer. You are in. Yes, you're in. You're the best shortstop I've ever seen in my life. Blah, 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 blah. I write this whole thing, this right. whole thing out, okay? It's like 5.30. The, the announcement is at like 6.15. Uh, and all of a sudden, I see Lark turn, and he goes, my producer, Chinch, just said I'm in, guys. Oh, my God. Chugging, chugging. Families crying, tears, case. I swear to God. Oh my God, this is Hugging. awful. Hugging. How do I not know this story? Because I can't tell it. I had to tell it today. I had to get it this off. Is aw- this is aw- I'm cringing. Yeah. Yeah, no, dude. Hugging me. My producer says I'm in. Yo, uh, everybody, he's in a DR on the beach and people are dancing around, whatever. Now, as this happens, I get a second email as he's celebrating. And I'm why, like, hey, why did he write I'm in? Because the next email came through and it said, "The Dem- I'm in the DR and have very shady <gasps> Wi-Fi oh, service. Oh my God. The email yeah. got cut off, Sean. Oh, this is painful. Now, here's when it gets worse. Oh. He didn't get in that yet. <laughs> I know he didn't get in the first time. That's and terrible. I know. And I told him, basically in his mind, I told Barry Larkin he got into the Hall of Fame. Oh, he didn't. Oh, that's <laughs> painful, bro. That's painful. Did I not? Did I hype? Did I overhype that story or not? Oh before? no, dude! I, I it's worse than I thought. I didn't know what you were. Gonna, I didn't know what story you were going to tell. <laughs> it's I can't story. believe I had. I I know why you haven't told that story. There's so much guilt uh, inside still. You can't get it out. Oh, dude. I, I, oh my God. Did you talk to Lark about it? What did he say? 20 times. I got to say this. I will say this to everybody, all you Cincinnati Reds fans, baseball fans. He was so sweet and gracious about it. I thought, I thought he was never, by the way, Lark is a tough, strong, big man and could. Dude, he's like a black belt in jiu-jitsu too. He'd he'd choke you out in five seconds. (laughs) And yeah, I was gonna play running back in Michigan, like, and King. And when he's mad, dude, you've seen Barry Larkin mad probably more than most people in the yeah, world. Yeah, I, I, you run don't, for the hills, dude. My heart literally came out of my butthole. Like I was, <laughs> I was terrified. He was so <laughs> gracious and he was so sweet, and I, I, I owe him such a debt of gratitude because it's probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever done in my life. I've done oh. a lot of embarrassing things. It's probably the worst thing. It's Ooh. definitely my the worst Chins, thing Chins, that, in my career. I'm going to say that that is a bad one. That's, that's, a, that's embarrassing. 
I told the guy he got into the baseball hall of fame. Everyone's celebrating. They're like, yeah, chin shit, chin shit, chin shit. All right. I know you gotta go. Oh I'm just God. gonna got that off my chest. That's a good one. That's a good one to end dude. on, dude. That's a that's an well, awesome. It's story. a 15 year anniversary of MLB I, Network. I think this was the 14. This was year two. It, I this, can't wait to talk to Lark about that. I gotta bring that up to him. Remember when Chinch told you were in the Hall of Fame? Turns out you weren't. Whoops, uh, dude. I got wore out so bad by the producers. Like, oh, like you know, and Petiti, Tony oh. Petiti was like, you, you're an idiot. Like, you're an idiot. Oh, I'm dude, like, I'm I sure Ants was like, what are you doing? Ants was hysterical. Hysterical. On the floor laughing, laughing. Like, oh, he was laughing? Oh, oh I thought he was going to well, be pissed. No, 99% of the people were laughing at me because they knew how upset I was. Anyway, yeah. well, on that note, happy. And especially, especially, dude, 30-year-old Chinch must have been so uneasy with himself. Oh, I was a, like, 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 disgrace. oh my God. Disgrace. I was single. <laughs> I was jacked. I was on like <laughs> testosterone. Like I was, <laughs> I was a mean, you remember 30 year old change. Dude, you? I do. Yes, I do. I saw 30 year old change right now. I'd be like, Hey, clean your act up. bro. You're, <laughs> you're, you are a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you met Jess, dude. She slapped you around. Now you're, now you're an upstanding citizen. Yeah. Yeah, you guys should have seen 30-year-old Chinch and 34-year-old Sean <laughs> running in town back in the day. Yeah, right. Oh, God. Anyway. So I All right, man. All right, bro. All right, Chinch. Love you, brother. Love you, dude. Have a great rest of the day. I can't wait to talk talk to Lark about that. And everyone, out there, everyone out there, thanks for listening. See you tomorrow. Hey, by the way. Oh, we got Matt oh, McLean tomorrow. Hey, Let's not forget, dude. We got all this talk. We got your. We got all these. All this red stock. We got the, the second base, yeah. not the not the future Hall of Fame short or the Hall of Fame shortstop. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a clean tomorrow. We'll see everybody. Dude. Thanks, bro. Am I wrong? That is not not the best story you've ever heard me tell. So good, dude. That is <laughs> that actually actually so amazing. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. All right, you yeah, go. Yeah. Sarah said we need to get a shirt that says "My heart fell out of my body." <laughs> All right, bro. I love you, man. Right, man. Have a good day.